Hello, welcome back to A City Planner Plays City Builders, where we are working on our Five Builders, One City collaboration. And in the previous episode, we were building the city of Geneva. And uh, so it's, it's a little ways away from the other city that we have over here that uh, Zardis put together. And this is going to be the final video in my series. Now, initially, I was thinking I'd only release one, but I was having so much fun with this that I thought one more is probably probably worthwhile and, 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 and merited. So we're still trying to figure out uh, what the city needs, solve this trash problem, and uh, you know, tr in general, just meet our, our RCI demands. So what I'm gonna do this episode is I, I think I'm gonna use this highway as a barrier for development and kind of plat out the rest of the city and get things filled in. So we're gonna have uh, the grid change as we go across the street, and I think we might add another park area. So I'm going to do some pre-planning and kind of get this all set up. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna lay out some roads, and I think I want the grid. So we have this little tiny grid, it's, it's eight by eight. We're gonna continue that. And we will continue to struggle with the fine road tool, because <laughs> that's what I've been doing. So lots of destruction there. I hate doing that, but sometimes you just got to. Um, and to re to establish this this other grid, I think it's going to be necessary. So what I'm thinking is it'd be nice to have a park area over here, kind of going down to the shore. So what I'm going to do, this will be a, a, a nature reserve, uh, kind of a, a kind of a, a maybe a, a regional park. And it, to me, it makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of residential demand in this area. So why not take advantage of that and have some sort of amenity for all these people within close proximity? But still, make sure that it's available to the greater region. So I am going to make a connection to the collector and uh, still provide those other connections to this city. So at the same time, I want to think about how I'm going to bound this area with our grid. So I think I'm going to follow the landscape. Don't work against the landscape, work with it and use that to break apart our grid. I could also be looking at the topography. I probably should be. You can see that some of these roads are a bit of a challenge. Okay, so now I just kind of want to fill this in. I'm going to turn off my road guidelines because I don't really care about them right now. I am building my 8x8 grid. I'm going to upgrade those roads coming in to this area and there's a lot of landscaping that or a lot of uh, earthwork that needs to be done here so I'm going to do some of that as well. Yeah and this is this is a, a problem that you can have when you don't work with the landscape and that is you end up with some pretty steep slopes. Uh, truthfully I'm questioning the suitability of this for development at all. Yeah it's not not the most suitable location so I'm going to call a mulligan and go back on basically everything up here. Maybe this is an opportunity for a, a larger city park of some sort, uh, or just some, some open space with some trails through it. Maybe we could leave the, the nature preserve a little more undisturbed. Okay, so it's looking good. So I think I'm going to do the same thing over here. I want to find the border of this area. So I'm going to continue kind of my pattern and then start working around the landscape. Now I think it's, yeah, it's, there are basically no slopes over here. So I don't need to really worry about that at all. All right, so that's going to be the boundary of my development in this area. And I think that that's going to uh, allow for some kind of natural development 
uh, natural looking development to occur. Uh, clearly, no development is, is necessarily natural. <laughs> So you might be wondering why I'm con uh, continuing this grid in this industrial area, and I, I know that it seems like an odd choice, but I'm thinking about uh, reuse in the future, and having that same style grid will make it really easy to adapt in the future. So at this point, I kind of just want to bring this all the way down, and then we're going to respond and put out fires as they occur. And I don't, I don't mean literal fires, I mean like fires in the game. So I need some temporary power lines that I'm not going to mess up. <laughs> so right there. Okay, so this is gonna be the basic grid and plan for this town. Uh, let me do a little bit more over here. Let's see the topography. Yeah, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> so maybe we could do a little bit over here, but I think we might just avoid it for the time being until uh, there's a lot of demand. Developing really hilly terrain wouldn't make a lot of financial sense because this would be really inexpensive land to develop. So why would you go and develop land that is difficult to develop if you didn't have to? The answer is you wouldn't. <laughs> I'm just noticing that there's a little square that's that doesn't have water in a couple of these, which is really unfortunate. But the reality you have sometimes, you gotta provide city services, so I'll make some weird kind of janky connections there. <laughs> Okay, so for the most part, I think we're in a good spot here. So now it's just kind of responding to our RCI needs. Oh, no, this is going to bug me. I kind of, we have this tight grid, and then it just kind of stops. I'm going to flare this out a little bit. Okay, so like I said, kind of putting out our RCI fires. That said, I want to think about our other modes of transportation first. We don't have transit anywhere in this area, that's fine. Let's focus on our bike network then and make sure that we have a network that is serving this area sufficiently. So I think about a loop on this area that, that borders the forest. This will give me an opportunity to make some connections to other areas that have bike lanes as well. Now, one thing I noticed is that I, I did put lanes over here, so I think I'm going to try to make a connection through here as well. Let's look at our topography and make this an interesting off-street path for people. So I'll get rid of all of my snap twos, get this to the ground, and get going. So I think to make this work appropriately, well, let's see if it works. I think it, it might, but my concern is actually, I, I, I don't think it's going to. So let's try one more thing. I think I'll have it connect up here at this crosswalk and that should solve some of our issues. Okay, and we could have another targeted connection to this little commercial hub if I make it, so let's do it. All right, so now we have trash and crime, but we have bike lanes, so we're good. <laughs> uh, we've encouraged biking and, and people are, are gonna do that. 
that's okay, so it's community-wide, good. Not so good is all of the crime. So let's try to, to, to fix some of that, remedy those issues, and I think one thing that we could probably use is uh, more of a centralized community-wide uh, police presence. So I'm gonna try to centrally locate this. And let's look at our fire safety as well. Probably something very similar in this area, not on the collector, but with great access to it. And as a result, uh, great coverage for this entire city. Awesome, I like that. So we're still having trash issues. Um, hmm. So we have some dirty industry over here already. So I'm going to just place an incinerator over here and see if maybe that can help us with our issues. Let's speed things up just a little bit and see where they're going. Okay, nowhere. <laughs> so we will, uh, I guess, keep an eye on that. So hopefully this that clears up a little bit. It does seem like there aren't quite so many trash issues. We don't have ground pollution forming, which was a certainly a concern. So I'll take that as a win. So the uh, the main issue or uh, concern for this area right now is going to be residential, which makes sense. This is a bedroom community, as I've as I mentioned in pr uh, the, the previous episode. So I want to, to to fulfill that need, but at the same time, I want to make sure that we have commercial activity through here as well. So what I'm thinking is these bike corridors would be an exceptional place for commercial activity. Bike tourism, maybe that'll be a thing within Geneva. So we're gonna, we're gonna tee that right up and then start zoning for our residential development. So you might've noticed I placed no parks over here. That's because this will all be a big park at some point in time. Probably not in this episode, but maybe in a future, uh, maybe in the next episode that I work on. Uh, so I, I'm going to be a little sparing with some of those amenities over here. Now, getting closer to the industrial area, I absolutely want to have parks and I want a good variety of parks. So I think I'm going to have a dog park over here and a large playground, which is a nice way to break up the grid. Just want to make sure that we're not going to disrupt the bike network when we do that. I don't love these bouncy castle parks. I never have, but I need to, to put my biases aside there. <laughs> They're great for kids. And then let's look for a bigger chunk of land that we could place one of these larger parks in. And then playgrounds should uh, be within walking distance of all kids. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one a little bit closer to the kids, or uh, to the kids uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the large park over here. But so now we have really great parks coverage over in this area, and not so great parks coverage over here. I think I do want to have one more playground developed in this area as well. So playgrounds are interesting because whenever there's a development, uh, there are a number of fees that are collected, fees for water pipes, fees for, uh, well, I should say, I'll take that back. There could be fees for water infrastructure. There could be fees for sanitary infrastructure. Uh, there could be fees for parks and for the development of those parks, the land and then the amenities in those parks, depending on who's building it. So I'm gonna say that we have collected the park fees up front. <laughs> and we're just getting ready for the development. So I'm trying to buffer what I know will be an industrial area with commercial uses to kind of, I think that they can withstand some of the negative externalities of, of a, an industrial district, certainly better than a residential area could. It's a nice transition. Okay, so now... Uh, I think I'm going to have a node of commercial activity in the center of this larger residential area so people have a place to get groceries and uh, and things of that nature. Um, I think it's always important. It's something that it's, it's so easy to miss. But if you think about it, it just intuitively makes sense. 
I'm gonna speed things up and let things fill in just a moment. All right, and that gives me an opportunity to have a, a drink of coffee, so I appreciate that. Uh, interestingly, I have some Tim Hortons coffee. Um, uh, you know, there's no Tim Hortons anywhere in Wisconsin. Um, I don't know that there are many outside of Canada, but they do have it on Amazon, and I don't have to interact with the Amazon driver. So, Tim Hortons coffee it is. <laughs> it's not that bad. All right, so uh, we start, we're starting to see some of our um, demand rebound here. But one thing I know is that we don't have uh, capacity for our schools. So I'm going to build some of that capacity now, build up that capacity now. So I'm building a high school, but one of the ideas uh, that uh, someone actually gave me in one of my series, Verde Beach, was the idea of using a community pool as an amenity for a high school. And I really like that. I think we could also use a sports hall and gymnasium. So we have our little high school campus that uh, has a pool, a little field house. Very nice. I, this is the kind of high school I'd like to go to. In fact, maybe I should have uh, made this a little bit uh, of, a, of a nicer high school. That said, good enough. So we're going to need more elementary schools. And you, know, you, you, you need orders of magnitude more elementary schools than high schools. Makes sense. If you look in your community... If you don't already know how many elementary schools there are, you'd probably be shocked <laughs> if you if you took a look. Um, they're just uh, you, you you just have a fraction of the number of kids. In fact, this neighborhood over here would probably have its own elementary school, and I think I'm going to include a nice community school over here. We'll give them their own high school too, since this is such a nice area. Let's let's fill in some of the zoning in the in these parts. You might be wondering why I'm spending so much time zoning all this stuff. Uh, and, and the main reason is I want these to be larger lot homes. So I think that by really being deliberate with my zoning, I can do something a little bit special here. Okay, let's speed this up a bit. We're not going to see a lot of this fill in because there just isn't the demand for it right now. So, and that's not all that surprising. We have a lot in this area that hasn't filled in just yet. Let's keep moving this along. I'm going to keep this, keep this going. I just want to see, is this trash problem gone? The trash problem is gone. All right. That is, that is huge news. Uh, that was plaguing us the entire previous episode. Uh, so while this is filling in a little bit, I want to start thinking about my connections to the rest of the community. So knowing that no one else can reach me, I need to give this some thought. So spot two, if I make a connection right here, maybe someone will, maybe someone will connect to me. So I'm just going to leave a road right there. Let's look at our topography and we'll have a winding country road going through here. And then it'll be straight because uh, there's not really <laughs> much topography to, to change the directionality of the road. So why would you build a curved road for no reason? Uh, property owners might be a reason why you change the direction of the road. We don't really have that problem. Okay, so I want to work my way up to this roundabout. I think going straight down is pretty unreasonable. Unless I put the st straight slopes too long, so maybe I'll just do that. That's pretty steep still, but I think it's probably workable. Okay, so let's clean up these slopes. Do a little bit of earthwork. Okay, nice and clean. So hopefully someone decides that uh, it'd be a good idea to meet up with me. The other thing is, I don't, I, I don't have any power connections. So, I'm going to just leave those right here as well. I 
Okay, so just kind of just kind of leaving breadcrumbs, <laughs> and hopefully someone will take me up on these breadcrumbs because I would love to be connected to the rest of the area by something more significant than roads. The last thing would be water. Now, this these communities would clearly have separate water, but our water availability meter is not tied to districts; it's tied to the entire region. So, I want to at least plant the seed for regional cooperation. <laughs> we'll see if uh, the rest of the region takes me up on that. Hard to say. And uh, just to, to re reiterate how important this is to me, City Planner Highway. <laughs> Maybe someone will recognize that and, uh, and help me out. So the other thing that I could do while I wait for uh, some of our demand to rebound would be to get rail service in. I'm not sure that the community's ready for it just yet. Let me see if it's in the area. Yeah, that's not an ideal location. I'd really love it if the rail connection came from this area rather than me trying to, to, to shoehorn it over the highway. Just kind of a personal preference, I suppose. And time for more residential development. We can finally get rid of that really ugly uh, power line. Oh, so I said that, and uh, maybe we shouldn't have gotten rid of that just yet. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, the city doesn't love that. Let's let's speed that up and see if we can get some development to uh, to reach this area before everyone is upset. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> so close. There we go. All right. So we're good now. So I can get back to what I was doing. That was uh, painful. <laughs> Maybe that's kind of an understatement, but. Okay, so I have all of that done. What I'm thinking now is... I don't want to inadvertently zone along this road. I, my intention has been to plant landscaping along the highway there. So I'm going to block my ability to inadvertently mess everything up. All right, good enough for me. I will uh, do a little bit of detailing at the very end of the video, which we are quickly approaching. So I kind of want this to feel complete. It doesn't necessarily need to be complete, but all the developable land, I want it to be uh, pretty close to developed. And I think that's gonna leave this in a better place for Biffa than to, uh, to kind of just leave it half developing. <laughs> Got some death, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we don't have a cemetery in this area, so maybe in this kind of, uh, maybe in some awkward chunk. I just zone this, but I think I might make this a municipal cemetery. Okay, so we need water over here at the cemetery, because, you know, that's what dead people need. <laughs> Water? <laughs> I guess you might need to water the grass, so I guess it, it does make some sense. And uh, we got a nice little bit of population over here, where I think we're doing we're doing well. And look at that! Oh, we were in the green financially for just like one second. And I think all this development might get us there. Might get us really close. Let's let things go for just a second. And as soon as I come back, things are just horribly broken <laughs> financially, which has been kind of the uh, the MO here. I wonder. I could raise the taxes. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it as is. And I think what I'm going to do is focus on a little bit of detailing, speed things up just a little bit, and then uh, leave it for Biffa. You might be wondering why I'm putting this landscaping along the road. And th the main reason for that is that it's a landscape buffer then between uh, the highway and the residential uses in that area. I also think that 
as some of these things are developing, there would be a significant demand for trees and, and another landscaping. So I like to go through and uh, you know pick one tree, place it sporadically, and then go through and, and uh, add in at least a few more trees to, to liven things up a little bit. I am noticing some pretty ugly terrain things going on over here though, so I am going to soften this a bit. So I spread things out, back it up, and then I use the softened terrain. I like to feather that, make the brush size double-ish, and then just get the edge. Sometimes you gotta go back and do a little bit more. Whoops, or a lot more. <laughs> just kinda tap it there a little bit. All right. Now there's just a, a much more natural gradient to all this. And I know that that's the edge of the development there too, so it makes sense to me to, to really make that look good. Back to trees. I'm going to go through with some other tree species and kind of mix those into the same areas. Ooh, that is, I did not realize that Prop Anarchy was on. All right, now it's off. <laughs> so hopefully I didn't uh, add a whole bunch of trees in the middle of things. Bummer. That is always a potential issue with modding. Surprisingly, it looks like I did okay. Okay, so we're having prop power issues again. So again, I'm going to add another power plant. Which is a shame because we're in a region that is so rich in power. <laughs> and here I am just sprinkling it with coal power plants. <laughs> so someday maybe I won't be doing that, but that day is not today. Today is the day that I have coal power plants everywhere. Okay, so I think that that's going to do a, a lot to improve the way that this city looks. And I, I just, I think that without landscaping and doing some work there, your, your whole city kind of looks dead. <laughs> so I, I think that that makes a huge difference. You can see the difference it makes over here. So rather than seeing a whole bunch of uh, cars, now you see trees. The other thing over here would be to put up some sort of sound barrier. There's a lot of weird freeway stuff going on here that I don't love. So I think I am going to put up some of those barriers. We're running out of water again, so we just can't win right now. <laughs> so I think we'll add a water tower close to the highway. The lights will bug people, so will the sound. But the water won't get polluted right here, so that's what I care about. And with that, I think that uh, we're filling in really nicely. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, this build, and I, I like where it's where it's heading. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, building this with me as well. One more quick speed through as as years and years pass since the last builder took care of uh, doing anything in this community. Okay, and you see things really starting to fill in there. So let's take a look. How's our traffic doing? We're doing mostly okay. The one thing I didn't do, I didn't do any prioritization here or modify any of the junctions. So I'm going to do that now. We don't have any collectors meeting collectors, so there's really no spot in the city where it makes sense to have a signalized intersection. So if you've ever met someone or you are one of those people that uh, talks about the stoplight in your city, well, this is one of those this is one of those places. In fact, maybe this would be the spot if we were going to do anything. But it's really not necessary. There's just it's, this is not a big enough city to warrant that. Oh. We just can't win. Water water uh, treatment issues now. So it would really be great to hook be hooked up to that that regional network that we're not a part of. Hopefully, this fixes everything. There we go. All right, so with that, I think we're going to leave it here. I think that uh, everything's in a good spot, and I apologize to Biffa for not having any demand for anything. That was one of the things that Zardis did really, really well, as he left me with a whole bunch of demand. Most of the demand right now has been met. 
and I, I think through a little bit of simming that could be resolved but there's a lot happening <laughs> so I am gonna let this go for a little bit longer and then give you a quick cinematic and uh, look forward to passing this on to Biff I'm, I'm really interested in seeing what he does and the other builders do so Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed this build. I hope that you enjoy this series and I hope that you stick with us. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting the like button. Uh, if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please do so. And if you aren't subscribed to the other channels, I'm not sure how you found this video, but subscribe to all of us. We're all great. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.